Okay, this video is going to cover the phases of mitosis and then cytokinesis, which is what we skipped over in the first part of the notes, so you should have these slides uh, maybe filled in from class. You should be getting this information in class, but if you're absent and have your notes printed off, whatever reason you want to come up with, here's hopefully a review for you, or first time if you missed what happened in class. So we're going to go over the phases of mitosis in order, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, on your notes, you have a picture of a, a plant cell, most likely an onion root tip, which is something we'll check out too under the microscope. But we're going to describe mitosis and cytokinesis both ways, plant cell and over here to the right, you have a picture of an animal cell. So your descriptions are going to be primarily for animal cells. We are animals, so maybe that's a good reason for that. And I'm going to use an animation here to go through them. And these you're actually going to see two animations you can find them both on my website first one is just uh, mitosis and cytokinesis cytokinesis it's going to be a purple cell which I don't know why these chose these purple it's square shaped kind of looks like a plant cell but it's not but in any case the rest of the stuff is pretty good there you have the parts of the cell that we're interested in most likely mostly the nucleus uh, and cytoplasm which is going to divide those are the two things that are, that are dividing in mitosis and cytokinesis so basically this is interphase. This is what a cell looks like when it's not dividing. It's just growing and carrying out its normal cell functions. Then you see in prophase, the nuclear envelope starts to break down. So one of the first things you want to write for prophase is that the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane is breaking down. And then prophase is the first phase of mitosis. It is immediately following G2. This is right after interphase, okay? G2 of interphase and then mitosis. Oops. So there you go, prophase. Immediately following G2. Nuclear membrane is breaking down, or nuclear envelope. And the DNA is condensing into chromosomes, those X shapes. So you start to uh, be able to see through a nucleus when you look at prophase under the microscope. You can see through the nucleus because that big ball of spaghetti is starting to condense into shapes. And here you have the DNA condensing. So your next thing you want to write down is the DNA is condensing into chromosomes during prophase. So there you have your chromosomes. Something else that has happened, again this is in relation to animal cells, centrioles, which we talked about in two units ago, the centrioles that are in charge of moving DNA during cell division, well here we go, the centrioles have made their ways to opposite ends of the cell, opposite poles. You can just write down centrioles migrate to opposite poles, in this case left and right. Alright, so there's prophase. And by metaphase, we're just talking basically about lining the chromosomes up in the middle. Okay, you can see, oh, one more thing you want to add to prophase, sorry. The spindle, these red lines, this is the mitotic spindle, you can just write spindle the spindle or spindle fibers, which are just microtubules, stuff we've talked about before, are basically extending out of the centrioles here. And they're going to hook up with the centromeres of these chromosomes. All right, So that by metaphase, we can see the chromosomes are lined up. The spindle has formed. And the most important parts of the spindle have connected to the chromosomes at these centromeres so that they can be pulled in opposite directions and that's where we get into anaphase. And something you want to write down for anaphase is just away or apart. Ana starts with an A, away starts with an A. So basically right there is anaphase. Okay, those sister chromatids that were once lined up in the middle, again, that are lined up in the middle so that division can be done correctly. This is as simple as possible, lining them up two by two. So that those chromatids separate from each other. And how they do that are the microtubules are simply shortening. It's like taking links out of a chain to make the chain shorter. That's exactly what's happening here. These microtubules of the spindle are just shortening. All right? And then it pulls those sister chromatids apart. All right? So basically out of phase you think of away or apart. It's pulling sister chromatids apart. Once they are apart, they are now referred to as single chromosomes. Right? They're not connected to their sisters anymore. So they are now called, si they are called single chromosomes. Right? It's going to be important for the later rounds here. 
And then again, you can kind of see the cell start to elongate a little bit in anaphase. Not a huge deal, but you know, still happening. Most importantly, we want to focus on what's going on inside. So here we get the telophase. And if you think of the word, the prefix tele, like telephone, a teleport, something that has to do with distance, right? These chromatids, or now chromosomes, single chromosomes, are basically as far away within the cell that they're ever going to get. Okay, it's for telophase. So single chromosomes are as far away as possible. They're pulled as far apart as possible. And they're, no chrom they're not chromatids anymore, and they're not connected. They're nowhere near connected. And what else happens in telophase is once those chromosomes get there, they're going to start to decondense into DNA. So it's just going to be kind of a tangled mess again. All right, something else we're going to write down. Chromosomes decondense. If you want to decondense into DNA, just that spaghetti tangled mess. One more thing that happens here, you can see the nuclear membrane reforms right there. Nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope reforms. And so basically it is a nucleus again. However, we still have one cell that needs to divide. So after telophase, the next part of the cell cycle, again, mitosis, the end of mitosis is telophase, the next step is cell division, cytoplasm division. So here's where the cytoplasm starts to divide, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. For animal cells, the membrane is capable of just pinching together. Okay, the membrane can simply pinch together and separate into two different cells. And an animation that I hate to show, but I kind of have to, because it looks like a plant cell. I kind of messed up, so I'm not going to take it past right there. For plant cells, the difference here is that there are actually parts that are shipped from the Golgi that are going to create a, what's called a cell plate. And the cell plate is the, kind of like the basic foundation for the new cell walls that are going to develop on either side. That's going to cause the cell to be two separate cells. Okay, so big difference between animals and plant cells. Animal cells, we have the pinching of the membrane. This pinch is called a cleavage furrow. You can see that on your notes, why it's called cleavage, right? Whereas the cell plate is not going to cause any pinching of the membrane. It's just basically laying down the formation for two new cell walls. So if you were to divide a room in half, you know, the most logical way to doing it was just to, to build a new wall, right? Or like kind of, we're talking about two walls here. You're not going to smash in the two ends to come, for them to come together. So a little bit more rational way of I was thinking about that. The reason I don't like to show this animation, but it's great up until here, is because it shows a plant cell having the membrane pinch, and it talks about cleavage furrow, which is not true. So that's as far as you want to take it for this animation. If you want to write in, tell them that they're wrong. I think that's why this one exists, because they changed it. So again, let's go back through these pictures. And what you want to start putting down here for cytokinesis, hopefully you have the other ones filled out, Cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. Cytokinesis, cytoplasm. And how plant and animal cells differ during mitosis and cytokinesis, there's two things you want to write down. In animal cells, there's a cleavage furrow. So you can see why it's called cleavage, right? And furrow basically refers to it as like a tunnel. Okay, so basically this membrane is forming a you know, connection point between either side. And eventually it's going to split and form two daughter cells. Also in animal cells, there are centrioles. Okay, centrioles in animal cells. Whereas in plant cells, there is no cleavage furrow. Instead, you want to write down cell plate. Cell plate here in plant cells. And cell wall. And that's this guy here, if you want to label your picture, which would be a good idea. Cell plate and new cell walls. In plant cells, there are no centrioles. We just use, they just use centrosomes. Centrosomes. All right, so that's mitosis and cytokinesis. If you didn't get it this time, watch it again.